This podcast is part of the Treksphere Network. To find more Star Trek related content, visit Treksphere.com. As you know, this is the measure of an episode because you clicked on the, the podcast. What you may not know is what we do, and it is our continuing mission to explore what makes Star Trek proper Star Trek and not – I got nothing – and not just quality or horrible <laughs> TV. I'm Jonathan. And I'm Paul, and the criteria by which the criteria by which we judge these episodes, number one, is there science fiction inherent or explored in the plot? Number two, is that science fiction novel or unique in some way? And number three, is there a conundrum of morality? A, there's always a word that I can't think of for, for morality that, that goes well with morality. What is that word? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Ethicitude? We'll never think of it. No, that's not it. <laughs> Close, but not it. <laughs> Ethnicity? <laughs> Is there an ethnicity of morality <laughs> in the episode? Uh, and I'm Paul. And I'm Jonathan. This is uh, our, this week's episode is Bill and Ted's favorite episode. Um, and the episode we watched is Rightful Air, which is season 23. Nope. Episode 23. <laughs> of, <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> episode 23 of season six of Next Generation. And the blurb, I still... After being distracted while on duty. We'll get to that. That's a grand understatement. Worf is placed on leave and given time to to get his personal affairs in order. Which is true. Yeah. I feel like it's kind of missing yeah. something from the episode, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all true. Yes. You know, they're, they're, they're not misleading us. No. I mean, it, it's a lie by omission. That's for sure. But <laughs> I mean, it doesn't say Worf goes and plays on his slip and slide all episode. <laughs> right. Which would have been a great episode. Um <laughs> <laughs> Which actually kind of leads into how the episode starts, where I know that you like episodes that start with the action, um, but you also like episodes where it's just deep in the sci-fi. And I would love to see an episode where it, it is – it's it's a day where nothing happens, you know, where they are literally just maintaining the ship and we're just following the, the lives of everybody who are, are doing all of the things – on the enterprise. Yeah, I I think we we sometimes get this with next gen where we get the transfer from the night shift to the day shift. Mm -hmm. And I guess I never really thought of this that data could be on both at any given time. Right. Uh so but I guess it gets his time off like any crew member would. They don't I don't think they use him all the time just because he can right. because he's always practicing the violin and stuff. But but yeah, I like that. I like seeing what the day to day would be on a ship, you know, like oh man, there's a leaf blower outside hopefully we can't hear it. <laughs> so one of the things that this episode brought up i mean to to speak to data's point they probably have him on slightly longer shifts so there's a little bit of a carryover for this exact reason um as we're about to get into but because there's no sun to dictate shifts that would mean that everybody who like the the three separate shifts that happen in the in the course of a day or maybe four depending on how they have it set up but jellico needed four Jellico did need Not four. Not three. Yeah. Um, but what what's curious is that means everybody, because there's no sun, they're all on a natural schedule for them. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, there there wouldn't yeah. be anybody I mean, who would be tired because they're working the swing shift. Like they would just be that that's their regular day. Couldn't you argue, though, that people who are on night shifts are also if they're on a constant night shift where they're not going back and forth it's the same thing that they just get used to being awake during nighttime and asleep during the day i don't think so because i i did work graveyard for about three months and i never got used to it um you know and i mean maybe i wasn't on it long enough i maybe you know if there is anybody who listens to this while they're working the midnight shift if you want to let us know how long you've been working on it and what you if you've adjusted to the schedule but i i don't think it happens because the sun comes up and the sun goes down i think that your biological internal clock automatically like tells you that you should be going to bed or you should be awake. Yeah. I think you're right. I think we're predisposed to light being awake time. Yeah. And, but you're right. Since there is no, they don't have that. Although I would think that they would build that into the operations of the enterprise that it, well, I guess if it's always bright, I don't know. I would think that there would be a health problem if, the lights were on all the time at a specific, you know, these lights might even give humans the ability to generate their own vitamin D or whatever, you know, who knows what kind of fancy lights they have mm -hmm. in the enterprise. Right. But I have noticed, I don't know if they do this on next gen where for the night shift, it will be dark. 
right on the or darker on the bridge <laughs> yes. and then and and then when it's daytime they will bring the lights up did that happen in this episode I don't remember. it didn't happen in this episode no but that right. does happen yeah uh which is which talking about it is weird because like if you think about it all like you could leave all the hallways just regular light and when you go into your room and you turn off the lights it's nighttime yeah and i would think that you couldn't do as much stuff on the bridge if the lights are down. I mean, I know that the the screens glow and stuff, but I don't know how they handle that. Or if if you're always on the night shift, if you're are like are, are or is it like doctors where sometimes you'll be on the 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 graveyard and sometimes you won't? Right. Well, know. and think about that. Like if you are on the graveyard shift, you know, like you it's it's it is what we're saying. It is where you are tired. Like why would you dim the lights? You know, like yeah. we're <laughs> we're going to turn the lights down low, play some quiet music <laughs> for the next eight hours while you are trying to stay awake. Commence the bubbling brook soundtrack. <laughs> All right, I feel like maybe they went into this a little bit deeper on Voyager. Which is boring as all get out. <laughs> yeah, but I like it. I like seeing the transfer. I mean, I wouldn't want to just watch them do nothing, but I like seeing stuff happen that is not doesn't have any urgency. Yeah, but it's there's just... something about how Voyager does it where I just don't care. <laughs> you know, it's like what we were talking about yeah. with Dr. Flox and, and Yoshi when they were leaving the restaurant. And, you know, their their conversation was just filler for them before they were attacked, but it was personal stuff. And so I was invested in their conversation, even though I knew that – well, I, I guess I didn't know. I didn't know they were going to be attacked. And so the conversation felt like it was important, whereas – on Voyager, every time we see people having non-story conversations, it's just it's just filler, and I I want to speed through it or you know turn on turn on a babbling brook. Well, yeah, and you start expecting something to happen, right? I mean, that's what happens to me is whenever the, an episode starts out with some sort of conversation that doesn't seem to have anything to do with anything. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, okay, when is the torpedo going to hit? Right. What, what's going or to the happen. anomaly show up on the scanner right yeah right. yeah yeah so anyway none of that happened in this episode <laughs> <laughs> well what's funny what's funny is the first thing that i saw was netflix once again warned me of sex and fear in this episode Ooh, and i thought for sure i know I, I thought well which none of which happened in this episode i thought it's like oh kirk must be on this episode <laughs> right. but he does not I, does kirk ever come on the enterprise uh sorry on tng no um he doesn't yeah right? no th- except in generations right even but even then, then he was he was never on the enterprise yeah um oh, interesting. yeah he so of the of the original cast spock scotty and bones bones yeah yeah um, so the second thing i noticed when this episode came up is so Riker uh is coming on to the bridge for the day shift and he gets out of the the turbo lift which turns out to be the clown car version of a turbo lift because like <laughs> 17 30 people, people right. yeah, come out of it i was like they're still coming out they're still coming out still coming out and the camera fades away and there's still people coming out right. like how, how big is this turbo lift <laughs> yeah i mean just think about the <laughs> the person who's on like deck 42 you know and knows that he has like he's on the, on the lift all by himself He's like, oh, here comes everybody. Like, <laughs> That's a good point because they can't pass each other. So it's a big ship, you know, if you want to use that. I guess there's four turbo lifts, though. Yeah. There's one at the front, two in the front and two in the back, I think. No, one in the back because the other one goes to a, the conference room. So there's three turbo lifts to the, to the bridge. So Data has a very interesting night. And reports it to Riker. I'm like, oh, I wonder what's when is something going to happen. Well, what I like, Worf is like, what I really liked about that was Data said, "Interesting to me." You know, like he he was he he was straight up saying, "Like this is gonna be boring for humans," but I thought found it fascinating. And Riker, you know, he starts to explain it, and Riker has like an amused expression on his face, like you know, like just letting letting the toddler go on his story. You know, it was just. <laughs> Well, and Data gets him back. He's like, it'll be uh, – my full report will be in your inbox. <laughs> right. You <know>? Yeah. <laughs> Which I'm sure is 200,000 words of how these frequencies were different than the night before. Well, yeah. I mean we, we also experienced that with uh, with Dr. Headroom You know, when he said yeah. maybe cut the, the length down. He said, well, you told me to be thorough. Yeah. Uh, I would love to read a report by Data. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so Worf, so anyway, Worf hasn't reported Worf to Worf is late. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's this nice little bit of forward motion when Riker realizes that something is wrong. 
I liked it. I thought it was cool. It was like something's wrong. Mm. And he immediately jumps into action. And I thought that was kind of cool. You see this a lot on Enterprise where – uh, at least a little bit more sustained of this sort of little kind of little hum of urgency that's kind of filtering its way through the ship as they go along through the plot. Right. And okay. it, it was cool. It was like a nice little moment. I wish it had gone on longer. Right. Um, well, especially since it wound up being nothing. Well, yeah. I mean, it was just they caught Worf masturbating. Exactly. You know, yep. That yeah. I have in my notes caught him, quote unquote, meditating. <laughs> he gets really cranky if he doesn't finish his quote, quote, meditation. And I noticed that his... Were his ridges more pronounced in this show? I don't know if it was just the lighting, but he, I thought that he – I mean it seemed like everybody in this episode, they're like had very pronounced ridges, the Klingons. And I was thinking, is this – are they? did they change his makeup? Because this is – I get this. This is season six, yeah. so they're well into it. I mean it's definitely so, changed over the course of the series. I don't know if it's a recent change in this season. Um, okay. but, and it might have been the lighting. But it was – I mean it was an interesting because I thought, OK, what's going on here? Why is he – is he like sick or something? Because I, I did not remember this right. mostly because when I'm just casually watching Enterprise, I tend to skip the Klingon episodes. Uh-huh. They just seem to be the same thing over and over again um, of just people in masks and makeup yelling at each other. Right. But this and one was just, totally just, different. This one was a little – it was a little <laughs> different. OK. We'll get there. We'll get yeah. there. So Picard scolds Worf for masturbating on duty. Well, and I, I to do. <laughs> but before, just so you, like it was just taking him a little bit longer. He thought they would make it in time, and he he didn't. Um, <laughs> but it was it was totally expected. But just the delivery of the two of them was so good. When Worf said it is difficult to explain, and Picard says try, like yeah. just that that back and forth was just. So good. Like, you know, Worf towers over Picard. And the fact that Picard still has the authority in the room is just so good. Yeah. I mean, I think any any time Jean-Luc Picard's in the room, it seems to be that everybody kind of is on their A game, I guess. I don't I wish I could get a a good answer, you know, a th- a three beer answer from any of the other crew members of what was it like to act with Patrick Stewart? Right. Because I did they have a lot of reverence for him because he was older than I think everybody by 10 years or something like that. And I may be screwing that up. But he was also a very seasoned actor. Yes. And, I, they, you know, they got him for a reason. And I wonder. Well, and he was stage and Shakespearean as well. So, like, he had. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess. Yes. But I don't know if Shakespeare prepares you for a science fiction show. <laughs> it, but, it doesn't. <laughs> but it does make you a, a more seasoned actor. Like you you know how to I, well actually I think it would make you great for sci-fi because it teaches you how to speak gibberish in a way that people understand it. Yeah. I mean I think Shakespeare would ha- would probably punch in the face for calling it gibberish. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> But I, I would like to know, did they all kind of have a reverence for him? The the fact that he was a senior actor and was really good. Right. And even though I know that they were kind of jokey jokey after a while t- together and they all kind of had a more a a not a morale, a rapport. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Well, in uh, in the first season, he he was very irritated with the rest of the crew um, because this was his first TV show, I believe, TV series. And he didn't understand kind of the the long hours and the long rehearsals and days of filming and all that kind of thing. So um, he he was he was the most professional through the first season, and um, and he just he was irritated with the rest of the crew because of how laid back they were, right? And how jokey jokey, yeah. Everybody's yeah. jokey jokey, yeah. He's so anyway, I just I just wonder, like, because I think Dorn Dorn is good at Worf. You could, you know, I, I think that whenever he plays Worf, you always believe it. And everybody kind of has a special place in their heart, even though he was kind of the dog on the bridge in the first season. Right. But I feel like that you're right. That was a great scene because they both seem to be really well embedded in their characters. And you just, you liked seeing those two things. Because you don't really, Worf doesn't get a lot of conversations throughout the course of the show like this. Right. I thought it was cool. I'm, I'm kind of with you. Uh, but I do have a little nerd out thing that I have to talk about. So Picard says Borath is only 12 days from here by shuttle, uh, indicating that, hey, uh, Worf, maybe you should go and take some R&R, get your together, as it were. And he says it's only 12 days from here by shuttle. He seems to just pull us out of the air, right? Uh-huh. 
is that kind of like you'd say, oh, the, the Circle K is only five minutes from here. OK. OK. Right. Right. <laughs> and so navigating space at the speeds that they're navigating them at and the distances that they're dealing with, which are tens, hundreds of light years and multiples of the speed of light. Uh-huh. Having that information is, is not, not practical. You would not – data can do that. That's it. You can't just be like, oh, I thought I saw Boreth on the map. Yeah, I think it's about 12 days from here. It's like you can't do that. Right. Like, by the way, the idea that he was in that shuttle for 12 days. Oh, I know. 12 days. He was in the shuttle just by himself. Yep, just passing stars. Oh, God. Yep. <laughs> we don't even have – like we don't, we don't travel like for that long. 12 days, ever. right. Unless you're, yeah. unless you're on a cruise. But even then, you're um, surrounded by people and you're surrounded by activities. Like you have things to do. <laughs> you have stuff to do. Uh, I just imagine Worf like doing push-ups in the shuttle crap. Mm-hmm. But singing Klingon opera. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Uh, but yeah, I did, that bugged me. I did, that bugged me that he was just like, oh, it's only twelve days from here. And they, by the way, I'm sure they weren't. I'm sure they were moving. So that that number is likely increasing exponentially because they're going at a multiple of warp, and I don't think the shuttle craft can do multiples of warp. So that is a is a demerit on this episode. Okay. So before before they started talking about his leave, um, just going back to Worf's meditation, um, he <laughs> they I mean he straight up talks about it. You know he was having a K less fantasy, and Picard's like, "Well, so how did it go?" And you know he says, "Well, he he did not come to me." <laughs> you mean his choice of words? Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Not a great choice. Of words. <laughs> Phrasing, yeah. Um. <laughs> That's gross, Wolf. <laughs> Don't do that again. You're on leave. <laughs> I think the Enterprise is about twelve days from here by shuttle. <laughs> they keep. Do, do you want to fix that, or do you want to do you want to stay with that? <laughs> <laughs> what did I say? The Enterprise is about twelve days from here. <laughs> oh no, I was I was being the Klingon that he was already at. Oh, like he was. Oh, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. It sounded very much like your Picard. Okay, sorry. They all sound the same. Right. That, I mean. The, the 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 Klingons kind of have a like Kalis in this episode when he finally shows up is kind of doing an a British thing uh-huh. or again like the Mid Atlantic is kind of percolating a little bit right I don't know it happens every once in a while um so, so we're we're getting a little bit ahead but uh, actually the better voice that you should have done for the Klingons is actually Skeletor because the Klingon was Alan Oppenheimer who. Was the voice of Skeletor? Oh, Kalis? No, the other guy, the the white haired dude. Oh, got it. Um, he was the voice of Skeletor, and also he played Mark Twain in the <laughs> other. <one>? Yes. <laughs> I mean, that just makes sense, though. The moment you close your eyes and you hear, it, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, that's Skeletor. <laughs> all right, Skeletor, I got it. Um, yeah. All right, so he's on the planet and he's he's struggling with his meditation because there's everybody there. Um, but there's well, it's hard to do that in front of other people. Right, right, right. I don't know if you've ever tried. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I I haven't. But you know, when you're when you're trying to meditate into a fire like before everybody else does, it it gets a little you you get a little self conscious. Um, <laughs> into the fire. Well, and so so the dude next to him. Who, by the way, is one of the regular improv actors on Whose Line Is It Anyway? Um, but oh, which one? The guy who was hashtag virtue signaling, like when he is like, "I see Kalis. <gasps> He's asking me to come to him." Who? Is, who did that have been? Oh, is this the is this the British one or the American one? Uh, I th- I don't know the British one that well. I Think both actually. So it's Colin Mockery, Ryan Styles. Those are the the two staples right. who came, I think, from both. And then there's Greg Proops, who was on there a lot. Wayne Brady, who was only on the American show. And so Charles Esten is his name. I think I know who you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. Um, also known as Chip Esten. Um, oh, yeah, Chip. So he was a regular guest on the American one. Okay. He would be there every other show or something yeah. like that. And he was good. Yeah. So that was him, huh? Yep. How about that? I thought he was older than, or younger than that, that he would, maybe he was very young. Who knows? Um, he was on Cheers, too. So how old is this right. guy? <laughs> <laughs> he and Paul Rudd go to the same bar. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They drink the same drink, obviously. Yeah. Um, so, all right. So he's like, after he gets frustrated, he's, they, they say he's already, he's only been there for 10 days. So my question is how long is leave normally? Like when you're on leave, you know, and he says it's 12 days from here. I, I was already kind of like, wow, he's getting like two weeks leave. I think this was more of a sick leave. 
Okay. If you ask me, I think that they 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 thought that maybe there's something wrong with Worf, whether it's physically or psychologically, that he needed to get this out of his system, and that was going to take longer than the vacation days he'd had stored up. Okay. And so he, you know, he went on the sick leave. Okay. I don't know if it's paid, but you know, it's Starfleet. It's not right. <laughs> Those a holes. <laughs> It was Amazon? Oh, that's what happened. Amazon turned into Starfleet. the Federation. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. I guess Worf eventually sees Kalis and he's effectively just beaming in there, what we find out later. Yeah. But I mean, like, talk this- about fortuitous timing. Like, I mean, also, as we learned later, like maybe it did have more to do with Skeletor um, knowing that he was there and that he was such a follower of. Kalis, but well, they go into the politics of it because Worf's brother is on the council, right? And so they felt that getting Worf on board with this actually being Kalis bettered their chances in everybody adopting that this was Kalis. All right, all right. So it, that's my guess. Okay, yeah. So I mean, that makes sense. And it, so it was a little bit more because Kalis or because Worf was there, not Worf just happened to be there. Which I mean, happens a lot in Star Trek episodes. Like the you know these right. things happen just when these crewmen are there, like. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, yeah, it is it is very fortunate that uh, on a whim, Worf decided to go to this one planet that they were looking to perpetrate a lie on the Klingon people. Well, which was only 12 like, days away. You know, they weren't on the opposite side of the galaxy. Yeah, or of the universe. 12 days in a box. <laughs> oh, I mean, God, I'd be so bored. So bored. I guess there's stuff to do. I mean, there's no, there's no holodeck or anything. Right, there's no holodeck. There's no visual stimulation. I mean, maybe he can watch Netflix on his pad, you know. But there's no but Netflix. Like, sucks. there's there's no movies. Like, it's all holodeck. I'm sure they have, I'm sure they have movies and stuff like that. They never talk about it. They always, I mean, you, you can see sometimes Jordy will talk to the computer as he's wont to do, even though his therapist tells him not to. <laughs> right. Remember, you should stop hitting on your laptop. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm sure there's stuff to do, but man, even if I had nothing to do for 12 days and I couldn't move and I was in a 12 by 12 box, even Netflix would get pretty old. Yeah. But anyway, you digress. And so it turns out that they are, that, that Kalis, the space pirate, <laughs> I couldn't tell, I couldn't tell if he was more of a space pirate or a Klingon Han Solo because he's got that, that blaster Solo. thing that's like attached to his leg. It's not like a holster that, that hangs from his belt. Mm-hmm. It's it's like belted to his leg. <laughs> and I was like, oh, it's Han Solo. That's what Han Solo does. Right. So, I mean, why, why not both? So a space – a pirate – well, he's kind of already a pirate. Well, yeah. I was going to say Han Solo is a space pirate. He's like a, he's like a smuggler. Yeah. 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 Okay. And so we go through this whole thing where Worf is dubious that it's Kalis, but then Kalis seems to have a lot of information that that only Kalis could have. Uh huh. And like, whoa, whoa, and whoa. Then, like telling Worf yeah. about his childhood vision, which. Did he do that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's like, I know you, Worf. I know when you went into that cave and you saw me and blah, 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 which uh, later on doesn't make any sense. <laughs> well, they. you mean because why would that person. Why would this clone of Kalis? Uh, oh, spoilers! Know that? All right, so we're giving yeah, that up now. All right. Well, well, I the audience it's hard knows to talk now. About nope, it. too late. Can't take it back. <laughs> yeah, I can put a beep in front of it. <laughs> People get the wrong idea, though. <laughs> oh, that'd be great because it starts with a. K. <laughs> <laughs> so they do say that they implanted his brain with memories of Kalis, which I don't know how you do that. It is the future, but you know, I mean, I, I guess they didn't implant enough and why wouldn't they give him the culmination of all battle? Like, cause that basically one of their arguments for him not actually being Kalis is he's a crappy warrior, right? You know, anybody can beat him. Worf probably would have beat him. Yeah. The other guy actually does beat him, but why not, you know, put a little Bruce Lee in there, like everybody make him a convincing warrior that nobody could beat. It seems like if you can implant, if you can matrix information into somebody, give them all of the information. So, I mean, if uh, this wasn't explained, but to do a little bit of the heavy lifting, they probably put in the, the memories and the information like that could be planted into the brain, but to do any of the other activities required muscle memory. And that's not something that they have the abilities to do. Okay. I'll buy it. I'll buy it. 
But I, I kind of had a problem with him coming back as kind of an older guy. Granted, I understand they kind of are, are saying, okay, this is when he died. This is how old he was. So this is how old he should come back as. Right. But I feel like it would have been a little bit more compelling had he been 18 years old or something like that. Because it would have fed better to the clone idea that they could only advance his age artificially by so much. Mm -hmm. And also him sort of being a, a reincarnate, I guess, is the version of this. It's unclear how they did it, how they cloned him. But the idea that, that Kalos just beams in, it'd be more intriguing. I mean, it's an obvious kind of an analog to Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. um, you could say. Uh, and that, that's kind of, kind of what they're going for, right, I guess, right. because um, Kalos is very Jesus Christ-esque in terms of the history. Yes. I don't know, like the idea of him coming back as a 30-whatever-year-old what, versus a child. You know, I, I feel like the younger version who's uh, overly wise – is more compelling. It sort of says, oh, well, you know, no 18 year old or no 10 year old for that matter would have this much information and could not possibly know all these different things. So right. that would be my one little writing edit. Well, and then conversely, there's no way a 10 year old could possibly be Kalos, you know? So like, I feel like it would have been a great, a great position for the argument of religion versus politics right there. Like the people who absolutely believed and the people who refused to believe, like it, it just, I, I completely agree with you. I think it would have made, that argument so much stronger you know there's no way a 10 year old would have this much knowledge there's no way a 10 year old could possibly be Kalos. right and that sort of speaks more to the faith thing too right it's like you have to have faith and i don't know like i i felt like it was kind of cool to have this old kind of grandfatherly type of figure who seems to be very wise that people listen to that kind of sort of the gandalf of a klingon gandalf you know <laughs> right but I, I feel like it would have been better writing. I don't know. This, this whole plot of so Jesus meets Han Solo meets Gandalf so far. Yeah. I love it. That's where we are. <laughs> okay. Meets Jake from DS9. <laughs> but this whole idea, the whole plot line of a religious figure comes back to life in a vision. Mm -hmm. And uh, he has to convince people via faith that he is who he says he is. And then it turns out that he was a, 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 a he was wrong fraud. Yeah. Yeah, and this that whole plot line felt like something that that was very appropriate for DS Nine. Oh, for sure. It just it just yeah. felt very because they're always kind of dealing with the prophets over there, and it kind of felt like something that would give something wharf to do. Uh, and it also felt like something that should happen over the course of an entire season, not that they would focus on that for twenty seven episodes. <laughs> it just would have although been, they would try. Right, it, it would have been just kind of. Uh, an undercurrent through the whole series, the whole season. Right. Yeah. It would be something that Worf would be doing yeah. throughout the course of it. Oh, so good. Because it felt – because this whole idea that – I mean look, think of it as Jesus, right? Jesus has returned uh -huh. and we've we've DNA tested him and it's him, right? right? And, and this would send a huge upheaval. It would be such a huge deal that the idea that they handle it in 44 minutes right. – just seems like it, it's not enough. Yeah. It just felt a little chintzy in that way. Yeah. Well, and yeah, I I I agree for kind of the same reason. Like it just it, the end kind of wrapped up a little bit too conveniently and um and it was just it was so great because you're right. Like they had they had empirical evidence. Here is DNA that shows that they match and there were still people who refused to believe it and then after he was proven to be a fraud, there were still people who believed despite the evidence to the contrary. You know, it was just, I, I really appreciated how they showed both sides. And I really wish that they hadn't just straight up confessed that, yes, he was a clone. Um, you know, they kind of had gone with like their, their multiple, like they just left it as all of the examples that people were giving. It's a shapeshifter. It's a symbiote. It's, you know, some, uh, all of the different things that the, that they were, that they were suggesting and that they, they left those arguments as like, even, even with the, the evidence that he is Kalos, there are still people who doubt. And even with all of the evidence mounting that he is not Kalos, there are still people who believe. So let's say they go with Worf's idea, which is you have the figurehead, you have basically Queen Elizabeth, right? Who is essentially just a figurehead. And then you have parliament, which is their council, uh, you know, that kind of relationship where, the queen is only just someone to to wave, I guess. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't know what the queen does. <laughs> but that kind of thing. That kind of thing where – which is a good idea on Worf's part. But the fact that they just had that idea, I feel like it would still take 100 years to get people on board. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. 
uh, even in an advanced society. It just wouldn't, I don't know, it just it, the idea that you have this ingrained idea that Kalos is more of a, a signal, uh, not a signal, a, a symbol, more so than a man anymore. Right. And now that he's actually a man, that would take a lot for people to get used to. Um, I don't want to speak for Klingons, but... <laughs> yeah, don't want to offend all of our Klingon listeners. Um, <laughs> but, right, like, I think I think that Worf is kind of being very idealistic to think that there won't be civil war kind of for the reasons that you just said, like you're, you're dealing with a, a belief in a person. And now for that person to come back, you know, there were people who would like the system that they currently have. And there were people who would say, no, we need to listen to Kalis and do whatever he says. Right. And they don't really ever go into the idea of souls, right? That Klingons have some sort of soul that goes into what was their afterlife called? Stovacor. Stovacor. And so they don't go into that. They don't go into the idea, well, this is his body, this is Kalis's body, but his soul is long gone type of thing. You can replicate it a million times. It wouldn't matter. They, they avoid that. I guess, I don't know why. I feel like that was an obvious question in my mind that I would want answered. It's like, yes, you've cloned, it's just like when they clone dogs and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, this is technically my dog, but it's not my dog, you know? Right, right. It's going to be a little bit different. So <laughs> yes, I just compared uh, Jesus to a dog. So uh, <laughs> my pet dog. So space pirate, Jesus Christ. Oh no. Jesus Christ, Han Solo, Gandalf, Fido. Jake Sisko. Yeah. Don't, don't forget Jake Sisko. Jake Sisko. Right. What is, what is Jake Sisko in this? He's 12. Oh, okay. 13. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. He's a child. <laughs> right. Yeah. right. So why not Wesley? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's obvious. Well, he's already, Wesley's already. Uh, or Naomi oh, Wildman. Gone. Oh yeah. I should have thought of that. One thing they didn't do, which I was happy that they didn't do, they kind of went around a little bit, was that theoretically if Kalis died a thousand years ago or a thousand years from the present, that's a thousand years ago. So he would be totally disoriented by all of the technology and stuff that he was surrounded by. Right. And they didn't go into what is this box that food can come out. They didn't do that. I was so glad they didn't do that because that would totally happen. Right. At least for the first – you know, you could see that happening in a Voyager episode. Sure, sure. Yeah. Well, and they, they did it just for a moment with the tricorder. You know, and he was like, is that a weapon? It's like, it's a tool. Right. And he's like, use yeah. your tool on me. Right. I guess use it's it true. hard. I mean, it, it, it wasn't like Sylvester Stallone and Demolition Man. Right. That's my point. Right. They didn't spend that much time on yeah. it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we've already mentioned it pretty much from the beginning, but the, the fact that the fact that Kalis was a clone, I guess that's for me, that's the part that makes this not a Star Trek episode, which is weird, but it's just, it's too. It's too cliche. It's too, you know, deus ex machina of like, oh, you know, and I feel like if they left it open with all of those other possibilities or it had been one of those other items, I feel like this would make it a proper Star Trek episode. But because clones are just the fallback so often and it's not used in a very original way, it's not it's not used in a novel way. Like I I have to say that that, yeah, this isn't proper Star Trek. It was just sort of a way I. Get, to get from point A to point B, why not come up with a more interesting way to to materialize Kalis yeah. as opposed to just cloning him? You know that that would have been more interesting to have another way that that actually put more of a question mark in Worf's head, right? That it wasn't just a clone, right? Well, yeah, like you know, what if what if it was done in a science science fiction way, but it followed all the the scripture verses of how he came back, you know, and so. He he. It's even more of a crisis of faith for him because he feels like it's a cop out, but at the same time, it's exactly how it was written. He would come back. Yeah, I like that. I mean, I I I feel like it shouldn't have been such an obvious analog to Jesus Christ. Right. Too. They should have done a little bit more work in creating a more novel mythology for their their Christ figure. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. I mean, and they just didn't. Yeah. And this this episode was very clearly written because they wanted to do an episode about a crisis of faith about religion versus politics and i feel like they they nailed that on the head i feel like they ended it a little bit too too neatly um they ended it a little bit too quickly you know but so for what they were going for i think they absolutely got it right it's just to to include it as a star trek episode there needed to be something that was a little bit more novel in their sci-fi approach and just cloning someone is not novel even if you were to say, oh, the cloning is science fiction, they didn't focus on that. They didn't talk about it. It was just something that was done and got them from point A to point B. That's true. Like, what if there were two Kalises? <laughs> that would have been cool. Right. right. I'm Kalis. No, no, I'm Kalis. 
Alice. <laughs> Well, yeah, there, there you go. I mean, just as like uh, in, in Christianity, there's baby Jesus and there's Jesus. Like they have a 10-year-old Kalis and they have this older one, this 35, 40, or probably given his hair, like 45, 50, 55 Kalis. He's like fat too. Like he was, yeah. had like a, a gut. I was wondering to myself, does the actor have that or did they give him that? Because a lot of the, the Klingons, the older ones especially, are kind of always portly. Right. So one one other thing, and I know that this would have been a, a huge reach for the episode. Like, this was just a bridge too far. But it would have been amazing if the entire episode, when they were dealing with Klingons, was in Klingon. And it was subtitled. That's true. They didn't do the thing where... Did they ever talk, talk, speak in Klingon? Only, only when they said kapla to each other at the end. When they said, speak! Yeah. I'm actually fine with that. I don't like subtitles. I'm going to say it. I don't care what you people say. I don't care how good any other foreign film. I just, it takes me out of it completely. I don't like reading a movie, you know, and that's effectively what you're doing when you have, especially when it's entirely in a different language. Right. Is that you're just reading the whole time. And, and, you know, movies are visual medium. And yes, I know that reading is visual. Uh, but, but I get what you know you're what saying. I mean. You focus on the words to see the action. Yeah, and you know a lot goes into composing a shot mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and how the story is told through the camera. That that all goes out the window when you're having to read a teleprompter. Right. That's a fair point. But I I like I do like the idea that there would be certain things they would say only in Klingon because it was too sacred to say in a foreign tongue. I like that idea. I like that there would be maybe an exchange where you can infer what's being said. Sure. Without subtitles. Like that I like that when that happens in movies where it doesn't matter, they're just speaking another language and all that's all you need to know. Mm-hmm. And you can tell from their body language that, that they're having a fight and that's all you need to know. Right. Right. But yeah, I, I agree. I felt like it was just sort of the same kind of Klingon sets which are these dark and kind of moist rooms mm-hmm. that are long and narrow. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it was that or they were in the conference room on the Enterprise. Right. I feel like the the Klingon race is just feels very one dimensional in that sense. They're always just yelling and having a boisterous time and punching each other for fun, or they're having these very somber and serious rituals where they are punching each other <laughs> or fighting each other. You know, mm-hmm. it just feels very one note. I guess this was a little bit better. It wasn't so much of that anymore. I guess they were fighting, but it was sort of more of the you're not a Klingon if you can't punch me in the face kind of thing. Right. Well, yeah, there was I, I like that. that He's like, you know, is there only anger and bloodlust in our in our souls anymore? Like what happened to the the enjoyment of the fight? You know, the two two warriors at battle with each other. That's one thing that they didn't discuss, by the way. Is did the cloned Kalis know he wasn't Kalis? Um, I mean, he he didn't know that until the very end, um, when when they told him that he was a clone. And near the end of the well, like when he's leaving the the Enterprise and he's talking to Worf, he was talking about Kalis in the third person. So he he was made aware, right? Okay. And I believe, despite now being a figurehead for the rest of the season, and I think in DS9 as well, um, this is the only time we actually see Kalos. Oh, so this is the only time that he makes an appearance in the show. I think so. Yeah. I mean, he's referenced. Interesting. Yeah. He's referenced now going forward as an actual figurehead for the Klingon Empire. Um, but I think this is the only time where we where we actually do see him physically. Oh, interesting. Anyway, so then the episode ends and... All is right with Worf, I guess, sort of. No, I mean, he, he, start- he straight up says, like, I, you know, I, I, I do not know. Like, you know, when Kalis asks him, now do you believe? And he's like, no, but I have a pretty good idea. <laughs> well, that's the whole point of faith, right? The idea that faith is no longer uh, relevant if you are presented with, with objective evidence. Right, like the Bajorans? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's not it's not a matter of faith. They have magical things that that summon magical people. <laughs> right. I, like you you have met your god. There is no belief. Yeah. There's knowledge. No. Yeah. There's there's actual fear that you should have. What happens if you're like a Bajoran and you don't follow what the prophets say? Oh, we find out. Oh, we do. Yeah. I guess there aren't any because the prophets smite them. <laughs> we'll we'll find out. You'll see. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to. Good. Yeah. Okay. 
So is that enough of that? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, definitely a no-no for me. Oh, see, this was a no-yes for me. Was yeah. it? I almost liked this episode. Yeah. I, I went into it not think, thinking I was going to be bored because mm. I don't like Klingon episodes. But it was well-constructed. Right. I thought it was well-written. Uh, they, they, I believed, like, the acting by Worf was great. Mm-hmm. Picard was great. Even all the other Klingon people, the, like, crazy wide-eyed Klingon Garon, guy. Yep. I was like, Jesus, they got to get that guy out of there soon. Like, He's so good. He's such a crazy Klingon. I love him. <laughs> I know, like when he's about to kill Kalis and he's got his eyes super uh-huh. wide, I'm like, oh my god, this guy, serious liability for the Klingon Empire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it was, well, I just, I don't know. I would never go watch it again. It didn't really intrigue me. It just, I could, I can appreciate it was well done, mm-hmm. but I don't really care. Right. You know? Well, and again, like, it's one of those things where I think, it, I think it's a good Worf character episode, and it's an episode, you know, where it, if somebody were to say, would you recommend this episode? You know, I would. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, it's not a sci-fi episode. It's not a Star Trek episode, but it's it's a good episode where you're dealing with religion and politics. And, you know, again, it's it's kind of resolved in a saccharine way. But um, but I think the conversation leading up to that point is good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. So it's a no, no, no. Yes. <laughs> no, no, no. Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's see what we're watching next. Okay. Star Trek Voyager. Season 1, Episode 15, Learning Curve. While Voyager's mixed Starfleet Marquis crew seems to be working out, a few rogue Maquis... Oh, sorry, not Marquis. Maquis. I'm going to do that again. While Voyager's mixed Starfleet Maquis crew seems to be working out, a few rogue Maquis are fighting the integration. I'm glad you did it, because I actually would have said we're fighting the interrogation. When I glanced at it, that's what I saw. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's all the same thing. <laughs> So uh, I always, you know, I like a little bit of Voyager. I don't like this whole Maquis thing. I'm glad they dropped it. It kind of goes away after the first season. Mm-hmm. But uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I, you know? I, they they should have either stuck with it or not had it at all. Like it's just it's one of those things where because they dropped it, it just feels superfluous from the beginning. Well, it was such a big deal, right? In the beginning, right? It was. I I can see them thinking, oh, this is going to be a show wide problem that they all have mm-hmm. that there's a group of them that does not subscribe to the philosophy of the federation and that's going to be a big problem but i mean one of the biggest personalities in the maquis balana becomes a, a company line you know a company line company man right woman um almost immediately i guess yeah yeah and they kind of drop it but i'm glad because it was dumb and they all just wore like stupid outfits they just wore like <laughs> they wore future civilian like water clothes. world costumes <laughs> right do you remember sorry uh let's go watch it <laughs> i've been paul i've been jonathan and this has been the measure of an episode as you know as you knew no oh, that's a good one we should we should do that from now on <laughs>